Hello, I am Dr. Sayyid Irfan Raza. I am going to start a series of lectures on biochemistry and molecular biology for the first year and second year MBBS students. Uh, today's lecture is on biomolecules and biopolymers and specifically in the cells. So what different type of biomolecules and biopolymers, what are biopolymers and what type of biopolymers are present are produced by the cells. Uh, dear guys, you'll find that uh, uh, I used to create uh, different questions uh, in the lectures during the lecture slides and definitely answer those questions. Then I, you'll find high definition pics and GIFs in this lecture just to uh, make the lecture interesting. And then I used to work uh, on different animations where they are required. Um, at the end, dear guys, you'll find some important MCQs with their respective keys. So let's start the lecture on biomolecules and biopolymers and the cell. In this lecture, we will cover the introduction of medical sciences and then we will discuss cell and its different types. We'll also discuss the elemental and their elemental composition and their concentrations in the animal cells and human being and biomolecules and biopolymers definitely and one of the no doubt interesting portion of this lecture at the end that is practice MCQs. So in the very first slide we will discuss the uh, we will introduce the medical sciences introduction of the medical sciences in the human being we study about the medical in the medical sciences we study about the human being and the medical sciences can be broadly grouped into basic basic medical sciences and the clinical sciences. The basic medical sciences can be further uh, subgrouped into three main portions, the biochemistry, physiology, and anatomy. In the biochemistry, we study about the chemical processes which take place in the living organisms. For example, the energy production chemical reactions. We study about the compounds. We study about the chemical reactions taking place in each cell. We study about the structure and functional uh, functions of the different parts of the living things in the physiology and similarly we study about the identification and the description of the different structures of the living things in the subject of anatomy. So let's start the lecture. Uh, dear students, the human tissue, human is basically composed of different type of organs and all these organs such as brain, heart, lungs, muscles, and muscles, eyes, and different other important organs the human body is made up of. All these organs comprises of different types of tissues, are composed of different type of tissues. Some of these tissues, for example, connective tissue, muscle tissues, epithelial tissues, blood, and bones, the structural portion, nervous system, are the nervous tissues and the adipose tissues, cartilages tissues or cartilage tissues are present in the human body along with number of other tissues as well. But basically all these tissues, all these tissues are composed of different type of cells. The question is whether all these cells have same functions or whether all these cells are basically are of same types or you can say that whether these cells have some similarities or no similar or there are no similarities among these cells so the answer of this question is that these cells are genetically similar means that they are sharing the same genome same type of genetic materials material is present among all these type of cells making different tissues but functionally they are different that each cell has to perform its specific function according to their tissues and these tissues are composing specific organs and different specific organs, different types of organs combine together and works together to produce a human being. So in this slide we will see elements and water content in an animal cell. So let's suppose this is a cell living animal cell. I, we will see that what type of elements are there and the specific concentration of each element in this living cell. So if we see this animal cell, you will find 59% hydrogen in it, then you will find 24% oxygen, 
this cell contains 11% carbon and the 4% nitrogen and some of the minor concentration about phosphorus and sulfur and some of the other minor concentration elements are also present composing only 2% part of the total. So how much amount of water is present in the liquid portion that is cytoplasm is almost 90% water and why water is important we'll see in the next few slides and let's see that uh, basically, we have just discussed that these type of elements are present and these are some of the basic elements. But first of all, we should know what, are, what is basically element or what are elements. So an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler components by any non-nuclear chemical reactions. So only nuclear chemical reactions can further break up the atoms of the elements for example if we have gold if we have silver or in the daily life we use calcium or magnesium these are few of the common metals or the elements in our daily life the whole elements of 108 almost 108 elements are periodically arranged and this table is known as periodic table they have their own specific atomic number atomic masses their specific chemical properties physical properties including what type of reactions they participate what's the importance of each element everything is uh, mentioned in this table which is the periodic table so in this slide we'll study elemental composition of living matters living matters mean animal cells so if we take the human being for example, let's suppose this is a healthy human being with a beating heart, no doubt. So if we see that this human being is composed of basically six main elements, the number one element is carbon, number two, hydrogen, number three, oxygen, number four is nitrogen, number five is phosphorus, and number six is sulfur. The question is why we mentioned only these six elements? The reason is because these six elements are in fact producing 90% of the total mass that is all the proteins, muscles, tissues, organs, all the proteins, enzymes, bones, cartilage, carbohydrates, proteins, amino acids, blah, blah, blah. Number of these compounds which are present in the human body, almost 90% of these compounds are made up of basically these six elements. That's why these six elements are having the key importance in the human body. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus and sulfur. Elemental composition of the human body. If we see that how many different type of elements are present in the human body on dry weight basis or dry body basis. First of all, we should know what is dry weight or dry body weight. Without excessive intake or loss of water, that is there must not be any condition of flooding or there must not be any dehydration or biologically you can say the body should not suffer hyper or hypovolemia. Uh, this base uh, at, at this condition if we measure the total number of elements in the human body we will say that's a dry weight basis human body. The major elements and the minor elements there are some major elements which are in the greater concentration present in human body and there are some of the minor elements which are present in the human body. So let's start from the major elements. Major elements and their percentages we will see in this slide. Elements for example number one is carbon the most important and it's constituting the 50% of the total elemental composition in the human body. And then you will find oxygen which is almost 20%, hydrogen 10%, nitrogen 8.5%, calcium 4% and phosphorus is 2.5%. And the last one is potassium. It is constituting only 1%. So these uh, elements, uh, seven elements almost, they are major elements. And now we'll see the minor elements, which are present, no doubt, in the minor concentrations or minor percentages. These include sulfur, which is 0.8%, sodium, 0.4%, chlorine, 0.4%, magnesium, 0.1%. Iron 0.01%, manganese is 0.001% and the iodine is present in a very low concentration or in a very low percentage that is 0.0005%.
So these are the major elements which are present in the human body. The major elements carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus and potassium. Some of the minor elements are also present which are shown in the table. What is the dry body weight basis? In fact, when the body is without having hyper, hypovolemia, healthy body, without loss of or excessive water, the body weight will be attested as a dry body weight. So, uh, in this slide, in the last slide, we have discussed that carbon is having 50% elemental percentage of carbon in the human body is 50%. The question is why carbon is present in a huge concentration, almost more than or at least a 50% elements, uh, elemental composition is of carbon. So carbon, the answer is carbon is the backbone of life. This is the very important statement. The question is how it is the backbone of life. In fact, 90% of the compounds containing carbon, 90% of the compounds in the human body comprises of carbon as a key element and if we see in this chart carbon is almost 47 percent along with sulfur potassium calcium sodium chlorine magnesium and others but carbon is 47 percent the question is what are the key importances most predominant and versatile element of life carbon is tetravalent that is carbon can bind with four different elements at a time that is it has a tetravalency that's why it's termed as tetravalent carbon is also forming large number of compounds including carbohydrates proteins carbon is present in nucleic acids in the sugars number of elements present in human body are comprising of carbon are composed of carbon 90 percent of the living system compounds invariably contains carbon so that's why carbon is a unique element in the and it's present almost 50 percent in human body this slide is chemical molecules of life in bacteria and animals that is how many different type of molecules how many number of different type of molecules are present in prokaryotes and how many number of different molecules or compounds are present in eukaryotes that is bacteria and animal if we see this bacteria uh, we'll, we, we can see that scientists research almost 6,000 different types of molecules or compounds are present in the bacteria, that is protozoans. And if we see animal cell, we'll find, my God, it's almost 100,000 types of different compounds or molecules can be present in the animal cell. That's why animal cells or eukaryotes are the most advanced form of the cell, basically uh, earlier it was identified that bacteria is unicellular and before bacteria there were animalcules which we'll discuss in the later slides but the eukaryotes is the most advanced version of the cell containing almost 100,000 different type of compounds molecules. What are biomolecules and their major functions? First of all we should know what are biomolecules. Very simple that molecules produced by the living cells are termed as biomolecules. Biomolecules for example, we, in, this, in this slide, we'll study biomolecules, different type of biomolecules, their building blocks and their functions. For example, DNA, it is composed of deoxyribonucleotides. Functions is that they are, like, they are acting like a genetic material. RNA is ribonucleotides. Protein synthesis may, they have important role in protein synthesis. In fact, it's the RNA is the key of protein synthesis along with ribosomes and translational machinery. Then proteins, which are made up of beads of amino acids, these beads combine together to produce proteins and in the body, proteins have different functions, very important functions like enzymes, proteins can be hormones in the human body, protein can be receptors on the surface, cell surface receptors or intracellular receptors, proteins can be transporters, protein can be structural element and the carbohydrates, the building block can be sugars or the glucose and the short-term storage of energy as glycogen important function. Then lipid, the building block is fatty acids, components and membrane, uh, they are having important functions. The membrane, cell membrane, nuclear membrane, mitochondrial membranes and different subcellular organelle membranes or the cell membrane, they are important part. Long-term storage of energy as triglycerol, the lipids also very important in storing energy in the form of triglycerols. So, if we see human, human is composed of protein, human is composed of water, 
Human is composed of carbohydrates, human composed of fats and minerals. So human is composed of five different types of mites, including protein, water, carbohydrate, fats, and minerals. Look at this slide. Look at this picture. In fact, you can find that this is a huge fatty human being, and compared to this kid, like a child, which is very smart in nature. What you see in this human, the huge, this huge human, look at this adipose tissues, look at the adipose tissues, adipose tissues, epidermis, skin tissues, a lot of fats is there. So how many proteins would be there? How many carbohydrates, fats and minerals and water would be there in this body and in this body? So it is something very important. So if we take 65 kg person, 65 kg human being, for example, this is a healthy human being, 65 kg weight you'll find that in this body protein would be ideally 11 kg water would be 40 kg carbohydrate 1 kg fats 9 kg and minerals only 4 kg but if we find these protein water carbohydrate fats minerals in percentages you'll find that the proteins which is which are all these biomolecules because produced by the living cells proteins are 17% that is 65 kg healthy human being protein would be 17 percent keep in mind students this is something very important related to uh, mcqs fats 13.8 percent carbohydrates 1.5 percent water 61.6 percent and minerals is minerals are 6.1 percent so this is the percentage of different bar molecules in a 65 kg human being uh, role of water because water is here you can see 40 kg of water is present in 65 kg that is uh, it, water has very important roles so let's see if this is a cell 90 percent comprising of 90 percent water cytosol is our cytoplasm comprising of 90 percent water what are the key importances of this water is number one water is a polar molecule that is if we see a structure of water you will find that the water is composed of oxygen and two hydrogen. Oxygen is partial negative. Both of the hydrogen carrying partial positive charges. Hence, it's a polar molecule. So water is basically a polar molecule. That's why it can react and it can combine with number of different compounds or uh, molecules. Medium for biochemical reactions. All the chemical reactions taking place in the cytoplasm depends upon the concentration of water in the cytoplasm. And then the water can dissolve number of substances and those substances can be transported within the cells or out of the cells and then the water has some physical important physical properties that is very high boiling point melted fine heat of vaporization and so these are some of the important key properties of the water that's why water is present 90 percent are very important properties in the cell or in the human being pre-cellular to cellular era uh, after the invention of microscope in almost 16th century, uh, people used to have uh, uh, rainwater and they observed the rainwater or the droplets under the microscope, newly invented microscope, very simple microscope. They observed some very small molecule which were moving. So animal type molecules were present in the rainwater and they termed them as an animalicule. That is the very small little life older terms of microscope animals are the protosomes termed as animalicule that is little animal from the latin word animal and the distinctive suffix culum that's why the animalicule that is microscopic animals the first microscopic animal observed were bacteria in the 17th century first the rubber hook took the kind that he observed some box like material in the cock and called them cells then in 1673, Anton van Leeuwenhoek were the first scientists who see the living cells under the microscope. Now we see the cell. For example, you can see it's a cell, clear number of cells are there in this diagram. You can see number of cells. These are the cells observed first time in 1838 under the compound microscope by Schleiden and Schwann. Uh, they produced uh, some important key points about the cells and they first introduced that cell is the basic unit of life. Cell is the basic unit of life or biology. Biology means life. And it is a fundamental unit of biological activity. 
that all the human being is composed of organs. Organs are composed of tissues and the tissues are no doubt composed of different variety of different cells. So cell is the basic fundamental unit of biological activity. How many different types of cells? So cells can be broadly categorized into two groups. Number one is the prokaryotes. Prokaryotes like bacteria you can see moving in the slide. These, these, the, these cells are prokaryotic cells. Some of the properties are prokaryote. Why they are termed as prokaryote? Because pro means before and kreon means nucleus. That these cells like bacteria are not having two nucleus. They don't have nuclear membrane. The genetic material DNA is present in the haphazard form in the cytoplasm. And the outermost covering of the uh, bacteria is cell wall composed of chitin, cellulose and chitin. Yes, and the DNA is not the linear form as the most advanced cells are the eukaryote cells. The DNA is present in linear form. It's present in circular form. So plasmids are circular DNA is present in the bacteria. Bacteria outermost covering cell wall and they don't have true nucleus. We'll see the detailed differences between prokaryotes and the most advanced cells are the Higher, higher cells present in, in the plants and animals, they are termed as eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells, you can see the nucleus blinking in the center. Then there is number of membranes and there you can see the red color boot shaped structures, mitochondria, some molecules, Golgi bodies, endoplasmic reticulum and the outermost covering is thin which is known as cell membrane. That's why you can say that eukaryotic cell is basically having a nucleus in the center which is covered by a double membrane or the nuclear membrane and also having some nuclear bodies or membranous bodies in the cytoplasm. Then the outermost covering is not a thick one. It is a very thin that is cell membrane present around or enveloping the cell, all the cell organelles, nucleus and cytoplasm. And then you will find that double stranded DNA in the linear, not in the linear, double stranded DNA is present in the nucleus in the form of chromosomes during the process of mitosis. You can find the chromosome under the microscope. So there are two major types of cells, prokaryotic cells and the eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells mean without nucleus and cell wall, circular DNA, while eukaryotic cells key properties is that it is uh, having a true nucleus, membranous bodies, cell membrane and the double stranded DNA present in the nucleus. If we see the detailed differences between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic, you will find that the cell membrane is present uh, absent in the prokaryotic but present in the eukaryotes. Cytoskeleton, there is no cytoskeleton in this uh, prokaryotic cell while the cytoskeleton in terms of microtubules and intermediate filaments present in eukaryotes. Plasma membrane, there is no plasma membrane. In fact, plasma membrane is present but inside the cell wall. The outermost covering is thick one, that is cell wall. There is no uh, cell wall present in the eukaryotes. It is the only plasma membrane which is thin and there is no cell wall. Then if we see further the size of the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes, you will find eukaryotic cell is larger in size, that is 5 to 100 micrometer, while the prokaryotic cells are very small, tiny cells, can be observed on the microscope. The size ranges, the diameter ranges between 1 to 10 micrometer only. So diameter of the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, 1 to 10 micrometer, prokaryotes, eukaryotes 5 to 100 micrometer. Genome is DNA present without any histones or proteins and the genome is nuclei not surrounded by the membrane. Uh, chromosomes are circular, that is plasmid-like uh, chromosomes are present, while in the eukaryotic cells you will find the DNA is double helix, helical along with the proteins which are termed as histones and they are covered by a nuclear membrane, double membrane structure and the chromosomes are present, the DNA is present in form of chromosomes. Then cell division, prokaryotes can be divide, can divide themselves by the process of fission, budding and no mitosis. But in eukaryotes you will find mitosis, meiosis and they can divide through meiotic or meiotic division, mitotic or meiotic division, specific assembly of centrioles and different species can divide according to their specific way. For example, sperm, spermatogenesis, oogenesis involve meiotic division while um, normal cells, for example, healthy cells can divide blood cells, skin cells can divide by the process of mitosis. So diversity in the cells, uh, in the human body, uh, uh, for example, if this is a human body, you can see variety of the different cells are there because there are variety of different tissues. In the first slide, we have seen almost eight to nine different type of tissues present in the human body and they are composing different variety of different organs which are working together to produce a healthy human being. So,
So how many different types of cells are present in human body? There are almost 200 distinct cells are present. Variety of different cells are present in human body and they are almost 200 distinct types. So all these cells are self-contained units surrounded by a cell membrane which separates them from surrounding environment. This is something very important that cells should be a separate, uh, a separate block of uh, environment having their own specific activities. So all these distinct type of cells are separated by each other from each other by the membrane which is known as cell membrane and they are performing different functions. And then all of these contain same genome but they are functionally different. This is something very important that they are sharing the common genome from the sperm and the egg. They combine together to produce 46 number of chromosomes. That is the total genomic content. They are sharing all the cells present in the human body sharing the common genome but functionally they are different. That's why there are 200 distinct cells. This distinct type of cells are present in human body. At the end, now this is the, there are four or five different MCQs, the most favorite portion. Uh, the percentage of the proteins in 65 kg human being is 61.6%, 40%, 11%, 17% or 12%. What is the right answer? Let's have the question again. The percentage of proteins in a 65 kg healthy human being, 61.6%, 40%. 11%, 17% or 12%? The answer is yes, 17%. You are right. The second question is, which of the following is the characteristic of prokaryotic cell? So keep in mind, organelles are present in the prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotes perform cell division through mitosis. Well-defined nucleus is present in the prokaryotes. Cell is enveloped by cell wall in the prokaryotes or the enzymes of metabolism are present in mitochondria. So first of all, you should know whether mitochondria are present in mito prokaryotes or not. So cell wall is present, defined nucleus is present, mitosis, they can divide through mitosis, organelles present. The answer is, yes, the answer D is right. Only the cell wall is the key feature of the prokaryotic cells in these multiple answers. So, related MCQ is question number 3. Fats in an average 65 kg when A is 11 kg, 40 kg, 30.8 kg, 9 kg or 4, 4 kg. What's the right answer? How much amount of fat is present? The answer is 9 kg. Yes, and this is very important question. So, oxygen percentage in a dry body weight is, you should know dry body weight. And now, oxygen present in dry body weight is 10%, 40%, 25%, 50% or 20%. What's the right answer? Whether the oxygen is 10, 40, 25, 50 or 20% on dry body weight basis. The answer is oxygen is present 20%. The last MCQ is the size of the euc eukaryotic cell diameter ranges between 5 to 80 micrometer, 10 to 100 micrometer. 1 to 10 micrometer, 1 to 100 micrometer, 10 to 80 micrometer. What is the right answer? The right answer is 10 to 100 micrometer. So this is this was the last uh, MCQ. I hope you had a very good time and interesting.